Now, I think I can say my next guest has been a regular over the years with us on Late Lunch. He's a fabulous fella. He really is multi-talented, author of many books, and number seven has just been published. It's a wee bit different. It's called Return to Sege. I'll check that pronunciation in a second. And its author is the wonderful Anthony Murphy, and he's on the line. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Jerry. Happy birthday, belated, be belatedly. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it gets to the stage where you stop counting years and you just mark another revolution around the sun, you know. <laughs> You're so right. I'll tell you, I don't want to talk about mine this year. Anyway, am I pronouncing it right? Is it Sege or Seges? No, uh, I think you were thinking French. Uh, think yeah. Irish. Segish. Segish is the name of the, in mythology, the well from which the Boyne River was said to have emanated. Good. So Return to Segish is the name of the book. I adore the illustration on the front cover of The Salmon. Who did that for you? That is an Irish artist called Sean Fitzgerald, who uh, who did the, the design and uh, he did a great job, didn't he? Oh, it's just absolutely marvellous. Now, th- what I love about this, because I'm familiar with this story since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, but take us back yourself, will you, to what year, a few years back, and you were standing, was it at the Weir at Slane or something along there? Yeah, that's that's where the inspiration, well, the first inspiration comes from. About uh, In 2016, uh, in the autumn, I was down there with the camera. You know, uh, people will see the weir at Slane when they're crossing the bridge, but you can walk along the riverbank there and beside the weir, there's a little floodgate. And I was down there with the camera taking pictures and all of a sudden this salmon jumped out of the water and up over the uh, floodgate. And this is something I had never seen. I'm not an angler um, and I'd never seen this. And over the next hour and a half or so, I watched as about 15 salmon made their way either up across the floodgate or up the weir. Now, they weren't always successful. Some of them would have to come back and make second and third attempts. But I thought this was the most extraordinary thing I'd ever witnessed. And it put in mind for you uh, the genesis of this book, and it all began from there. Oh, what a wonderful story the salmon's life is, from egg till they return to spawn themselves as adults, be it two, three, four or five years uh, later. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this book, I can't believe this, is this the truth? You you hand-wrote this book. Did um I decided that I wanted to write it so carefully and, you know, slowly. I wanted the process to be uh, what felt more natural than sit in front of a keyboard and typing letters onto a screen, you know. So I uh, I had been gifted a beautiful notebook with creamy pages by a good friend of mine, Laura Murphy. And Uh, One day I just sat down and said, this is going to be something very different and very special. And don't try to categorize it or think too much about what type of book it's going to be. Don't make any sort of a plot or a plan. Just sit down and start writing. And that's what emanated. Well done to you. Going back to the quill and the paper, you can't beat it, I have to say. Now, you say, and I'm quoting yourself here right early on in the book, this is not a conventional book. Explain, please. Well, you see, normally, I mean, it's ostensibly a work of fiction, Jerry, but it draws so much from the mythology of the Boyne Valley and the landscape of the Boyne Valley and from my own experience that you could kind of say it's sort of like a mythopoetic work uh, ex- really examining the meaning of life and the human existence and, you know, the depth of the human conscious. And I, as I say, I use this Jungian uh, term, the unconscious or what we might call the subconscious, you know, that uh, there's so much depth to the human being and our experiences of life Um, they're difficult to explain in empirical and rational terms. And sometimes you need the poetry and the mythology to actually give it the correct level of depth that, you know, it requires in order to be explained in some way, you know. And I thought that the story of the Salmon of Knowledge as the basis for the book, although, as you know, it's not the only myth from which I draw. Mm. the, the, The Salmon is a remarkable creature in, as you pointed out, because it starts out from the, the spawning pools in the upper reaches of, well, well, let's just talk about the Boyne. And it makes its way down out into the 
Irish Sea and then eventually out into the Atlantic Ocean. So a, fr- a, a fish born and growing up in fresh water finds the salt water, goes out into the deepest parts of the ocean, lives an ocean life, and then finds its way back through some miracle of biology, uh, you know, to the exact place where it was spawned in order to spawn the next generation. And I just find that the most amazingly remarkable thing. Uh, And I think I said it in the book somewhere about how, you know, having seen that, uh, despite all of the wonderful things that humans have achieved sending men and women into space, for instance, and landing spacecraft on Mars and all that stuff. I I was still totally in awe at this miracle of nature and the salmon's ability to come back to where it all uh, started, you know. It's the most wonderful story and it's one that should be taught to every child to understand uh, the magnificence of nature and the instinct of that creature and in a way Anthony for the human life cycle you know we come into this world with nothing we leave with nothing and an awful lot of us do you know go out in the world and ironically end up back where it all began to end our lives. Yeah, well, this is something that I think uh, early cultures had a particular interest in, you know, and like it's the sort of thing that is still the most, I I, I think it underlies most of, you know, human uh, emotion, human expression. And that is the biggest question of all for humanity is, you know, what happens to us when we die? Where do we come from and where are we going? Because we find it very difficult to make sense of the, as it were, the carnal and biological life that we have. And it's no wonder then that for generations and for hundreds and thousands of years that humans who lived along the banks of the Boyne River tried to explain their life through the, the the words and the songs and the poems of mythology because that was the only way as I say there was no rational way to explain it and perhaps there's no rational way to understand it because if it is just this biological you know physical life and and that you, you know when it ends it ends and that's it then there's no to me there's no meaning in that you know there's it, it loses all all meaning it becomes a sort of a, 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 a hopeless thing and I, I, I i'm not sure jerry if you got a chance to read the whole thing but i would say that return to segish is very reaffirming in in terms of one of the things that i wanted to do was 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 to to get across the idea that it is it is okay to try to live the fullest best life that you can possibly live uh, and and so that you can sort of park that question, as it were, about what happens. It's not about it so much about what happens to you when you die. It's it's more about what happens to you when you live, you know, and how you live your life. Yes. Yes, and that's such an important point. If we could all just bear that to the forefront of our thoughts every day, what a wonderful world this would be. Sadly, it slips for oh so many and look at the result of what happens. But but here's the thing. It's not based on any religion, which is, you know, what you're even talking about there. You can be a religious. You don't have to have any faith or of a faith to, you know, understand what you're getting at there. Correct. Uh, well, I would consider myself agnostic. Um, and the way I explain that uh, generally is that I don't have enough evidence to suggest that there is life after death and that there are a, there is a God or there are gods or deities, uh, nor do I have enough evidence to say that there isn't. So I'm kind of the sort of person who sits on the fence from that point of view. But there is a difference, Jerry, a core difference between religion and spirituality. I mean, you can be a very spiritual mm. person and not be attached to any religion. And, you know, mythology, I find naturally mythology and spirituality kind of sit as comfortable bedfellows, as it were. You know, when you read enough Irish mythology, you can't but have a spiritual viewpoint. And the spiritual viewpoint is what feeds into the poetic viewpoint. Again, the expression of the great 
mystery of life, exemplified by the river itself, the flowing waters, the, the, the emanation from a source, the journey out into the ocean, which in our own human lives represents our adult experience of life and our mingling with others and what we do with our lives. But then there's that call to return, the call to return to the source. We're all going to go back there at some point. And the thing is to go back and to embrace it, to embrace it in all its fullness, to embrace it with as much joy as possible uh, for, I suppose, for a life well lived and, you know, uh, uh, that you've done your best, as I say, to, to live uh, an exemplary existence uh, to help people as much as possible along your way, um, you know, and and to 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 to, uh, to go against the current. Then the most most remarkable thing about the salmon coming back is that for many of them it's their last journey, and they will expend all their energy jumping all those weirs and um, fording points and all of the barriers that the river offers on the way back. It's it's really fantastic. Yes, and they flow against the current. Is right, and generally at a time of the year. When when the current is at its strongest against them and they defy it and they get up there to the headwaters to uh, begin the cycle again. Look, you mentioned their myth and legend and in the book you're quite obvious. A lot of this is beyond human capability in terms of our thinking and you do touch on the subconscious, that part of us that, you know, we try to dip into as well. But undoubtedly, Anthony, going back to a point you made there, the myth and legend it's significant. It plays a part. It's just not, you know, uh, fluffy stuff. No, what people sort of fail to realise these days that myth and, and legend are not mere storytelling. They're not, I mean, they, well, don't, get me wrong, there were plenty of people who were able to re recite stories in the past for entertainment and to listen to the Shanachi in the old days would have been uh, quite, quite, you know, mind opening and entertaining. But at its root, uh, the likes of C.G. Young and Joseph Campbell and others uh, believed that mythology was pedagogical. It was life affirming, but it was also teaching. It was a teaching aid. So it was part of the process of growing up and initiation from childhood to adulthood. And, and there are lessons there uh, for all of us. Uh, a sort of psychotherapy, as it were. And I think that's why the likes of C.G. Young became so interested in mythology, because he realised that in the 20th century, with all the changes that had occurred you know, uh, the Industrial Revolution or post-Industrial Revolution and all the modernization that was going on, going on in the world. And the world was shrinking in size as the transport networks grew. I think he realized that mythology was dying and it needed to be replaced with something. And what we replaced it with was psychotherapy. One could argue that psychotherapy doesn't do as good a job as community-based mythology. Um, and I would uh, have been arguing for the past 20 years that I think we should definitely look at embracing our own mythology and, 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 and becoming interested in it and, you know, uh, retelling those stories. What What's the, the phrase in, in, in the book? Uh, myths retold are myths reawakened. You know, the idea that we're not just telling stories for the sake of it and we're not just telling stories so we hope to get more tourists into Ireland. We're telling them actually because at their base they have a, a, a very real meaning for us. Oh, they certainly have. Uh, you know, you dip into your past work, of course, and all the brilliance and history and tradition and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years of the Boyne Valley and all that exists along it. And of course, the salmon of knowledge. Back to salmon again. Anthony, just before we finish, may I say to you, it's a beautiful work. It's a wonderful book. And I, I really do recommend it to people to take this book and read it nice and slowly, absorb it and enjoy it and think about uh, what is in this book and where it is pointing us towards. I say again, the illustration is beautiful by Sean Fitzgerald. Anglo printers, well, what do you say? Look yeah, at the job, job they've done on the book. It's Thank your you. first hardback, I, I know as well. Yeah. And uh, I want to congratulate you on it. It's a new departure. But you know, like anything you've ever done in your life, it's simply brilliant. Congratulations again on the book. Where That's is it available, great. Anthony? Well, at the moment, due to COVID-19, like the only place you can get it at the moment is direct from me on the website, which is mythicalireland.com. Or if you plug into the social media channels, you're just looking for Mythical Ireland and just get in touch. I can send uh, signed copies, obviously, anywhere in the world. Uh, when the pandemic 
quietens down and that will happen just so people know this thing will pass we just have to be patient for the moment uh, i'm going to try and get it into the local bookshops but for now uh, if you're on a kindle you can also get it on amazon kindle but for now just direct from me lovely mythicalireland.com google mythical ireland and what a lovely gift it would be to gift to somebody at any stage well done to you again and keep doing what you do brilliantly brilliantly anthony Thanks very much, Jerry, for all your support. Not at all. You're very welcome. He much is a top man. He really is. Thank you, Anthony Murphy there. Return to Segish is the name of his latest book. 